So uh, thank you, Chris. Thanks, organizing committee, for allowing me to share some of my musings on neoadjuvant therapy prior to surgery. Some of the definitions up front. What is neoadjuvant therapy? It means treatment given prior to planned surgery. The surgery has to be given with a curative intent. So we think we're going to cure patients with these interventions. And it can be a form of systemic therapy, pills, infusions, or it can be local therapy, such as radiotherapy. Now, why is neoadjuvant therapy relevant, and I think even more relevant than in the past, is because our landscape of systemic therapies has expanded tremendously. We now have drugs that actually work, and they, they may be targeted therapies, or more excitingly, they can be immunotherapies, um, drugs that turn on our immune system. Let's not forget that modern radiotherapy is effective. Traditionally, radiation has been sort of foo-fooed in the world of kidney cancer, but we now have modern techniques such as stereotactic ablative radiation or SABR. Um, uh, it's highly accurate and enables delivery of high radiation doses with excellent local and systemic control rates for our patients. So let's not forget that. Why would one consider neoadjuvant therapy? Well, first and foremost, to improve survival, improve our long-term cure rates. There are some technical aspects that can be useful. It may make surgery easier, decrease complications, allow us to resect things surgically that we could not resect without systemic therapy. And the only other reason I would ever consider this type of approach for technical reasons would be to, for preservation of kidney function in an imperative setting to avoid a need for a nephron replacement surgery, uh, nephron replacement therapy. So can we make tumors smaller with targeted therapy? Yet, therapies, yes, we can. There's a plethora of anecdotes like this where a large uh, 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 tumor with, with bulky adenopathy, uh, probably borderline resectable by some standards, could be shrunk down to something that's very, very manageable and maybe safer to do with less complications, less blood, uh, blood loss, shorter hospital stay. Uh, you get the idea. The best study on this subject actually com comes from uh, Dr. Karam and Dr. Wood. They did a phase two trial looking on excitinib prior to surgery and have shown us very nicely that you can shrink the tumors, but the shrinkage uh, percentages are, you know, I would say modest, 30% or so. So uh, certainly not a home run. So yes, there, there, there are some borderline cases that may be not resectable up front. We can shrink them maybe by 30% or so and make the surgery more palatable uh, and easier on our patients. Now, we know that a lot of, or you know, up to 20, 30% of our kidney cancer patients present with a tumor thrombus, and this can be quite significant. Some of these thrombi can extend all the way to the heart. The surgery for something like this is complex with high complication rates. It requires sometimes going into the chest, the sternotomy, and sometimes requires a cardiopulmonary bypass. Can we give targeted therapies to maybe shrink the thrombus and reduce the morbidity of the surgery? We've looked at that. We had 48 such patients that got targeted therapies prior to uh, surgery. And again, what we've noticed is not a home run. Yes, in some patients, maybe in 10% of the cases, we can shrink the thrombus, maybe make the surgery more palatable and easier. But in majority of cases, there's no change. And you have to weigh the risk of this approach against the fact that in some patients, the disease can actually progress. Again, certainly not a home run. Now, this is, I think, something more interesting and something more feasible. Uh, in some instances, removing the removal of the whole kidney can render our patients anephric or uh, in need of dialysis. Can we give targeted therapies up front to shrink the tumors and allow us to remove the tumors and save the kidney? Uh, there are several trials. I'll just highlight one from Cleveland Clinic where they looked at 25 patients where patients would have been rendered anephric essentially, and they gave them pazopinib, which is a targeted agent prior to surgery. And you can see there's two examples of such situations where you know, probably the whole kidney would have had to be taken. After pazopinib, the tumor shrunk, and, and this patient was managed with a partial nephrectomy, preserving the kidney and allowing him not to go on dialysis. And so in this particular study, 80% of the patients that were thought not to be candidates for partial nephrectomy then were able to receive partial nephrectomy after they were treated with drugs. <clears throat> so certainly a feasible approach and something to consider, potentially consider in some of these cases. Now, can neoadjuvant therapy improve survival? In to, as of 2018, none of our systemic therapies in perioperative setting can improve survival in an adjuvant or neoadjuvant setting. So we don't have any data to suggest that. There are multiple drugs, sutans, pazopinibs, excitinibs, that have been tested in an adjuvant setting after surgery with curative intent. And none of these trials so far have demonstrated any survival advantage. Now, I think it would be remiss to think that usage of such drugs or targeted therapies prior to surgery would also result in improvement of survival. Now, 
the hottest things uh, you know, in cancer therapies now are, are drugs that target uh, immune evasion or checkpoint inhibitors. And remember, you may have already heard this today, um, uh, tumor cells are very smart. They know how to turn off our own immune system. So now we have drugs to turn our own immune system on. How about giving such drugs in pre-surgical setting? Well, I think it actually makes a lot of sense because unlike targeted therapies, um, our immune therapies, and this is in metastatic settings, actually produce complete responses. So we can now actually cure patients long term with um, uh, checkpoint inhibitors or immunotherapies. And so what that means is that now we have capacity to eradicate micrometastatic disease, which we did not really have with drugs such as Sutant or, or targeted therapies. Now, I think there's also a great rationale in giving these drugs prior to surgery. Now, think about your, your kidney tumor as an immune factory that has been shut down. And what these drugs can allow us to do is actually turn the immune factory back on and increase the immune, immune cell production. There is certainly preclinical data, especially in mice, that, that shows that neoadjuvant checkpoint inhibitors actually produce better results than giving these drugs in an adjuvant setting or after the surgery. And what's more important is that the duration of neoadjuvant exposure doesn't have to be long. Um, they, so, the, so the patients or the mice in this setting can, can pro progress to surgery very quickly and not waste time after initial exposure to the immune agents. So this serves as an impetus, or served as an impetus, for the PROSPER trial, which I think is probably the most interesting trial right now in kidney cancer. And this is uh, a trial where patients actually get, or, rand or get randomized to a checkpoint inhibitor nivolumab uh, for two infusions, and then they go on to surgery, and they continue their nivolumab afterwards. I think it's a very important trial. It accrues now in over 180 sites in the United States. Um, up to this point, I think about 90 or more patients now have been enro enrolled out of 700 plus. And any, any Canadians over here? Yes, so, so this will be open in Canada very soon. Again, I think very important trial, very important for us to support this. Now, moving back to the radiotherapy, as I suggested, and we, we've talked about stereotactic radiation. We know that this modality causes rapid endothelial death. It can uh, cause an, uh, uh, necrosis of the cancer cells, and it actually induces immune response with excellent local control rates in metastatic or local setting, and uh, there's multiple studies that have shown that. So what we at my institution hypothesize is that in patients with, who are at very high risk for recurrence after surgery, such as patients with, uh, with kidney cancer and tumor thrombus, where the metastatic risk may actually be increased by manipulating the, the, the thrombus during surgery, the giving the stereotactic radiation prior to surgery may actually reduce the metastatic risk. But again, by, by eliciting but, or by killing those tumor cells prior to surgery and eliciting immunologic response. So this is the trial that we actually have ongoing in our center. Patients, again, with very high risk for relapse, patients with, uh, with cable tumor thrombus get uh, five doses of stereotactic radiation into the thrombus and then proceed to nephrectomy and thrombectomy. Um, the study, already, we already finished our safety lead-in of six patients, and uh, the, um, the primary endpoint is one-year recurrence-free survival. This is just sort of an example of what we're targeting. Here you can see a large uh, primary kidney tumor with a tumor thrombus going up the cava, and this is what we're radiating. We're radiating the tumor thrombus. Again, the idea here is not to treat the, this cancer completely and forget about it. All these patients progress to surgery. The idea is to sterilize these cancer cells that are sitting here and then are released into the circulation as we manipulate this, this thrombus during surgery. So again, the initial sort of lead-in safety phase of this trial has been finished. We, there are really no untoward radi radiotherapy-related or surgical effects. So the patients tolerated the surgery and radiotherapy very well. What we have noticed is that two out of six metastatic patients that were enrolled in this trial exhibited a very nice and very unusual uh, upscopal effect. And just by radiating the thrombus alone, you can see here that pulmonary nodules have disappeared or gotten smaller in a lot of these patients. So certainly attests to the fact that there is ongoing immunologic uh, response to radiotherapy that's given to the thrombus. Obviously, with testing all these patients, we checked the, the various serum parameters and, and immune responses. So we're going to, I hope to learn a lot from this trial. Now, can we combine radiation therapy and immunotherapy to maximally prime the immune system prior to surgery, right? Radi radiotherapy elicits the immune response. We can prime uh, with, uh, with checkpoint inhibitors prior to surgery to elicit the immune response with the primary inflation. But can we combine the two modalities to produce maximal results? I don't know, but this is a trial that we are about to open at our institution where patients, again, we know that majority of these patients with really bulky tumors, 
positive nodes, resectable metastases, even though we can put them through all kinds of surgery and do it very well technically, we know a lot of these patients will relapse. But can we combine our radiation experience with our checkpoint experience and really prime the immune system? And so in this trial, again, these patients are uh, exposed to a checkpoint inhibitor abelumab for two infusions, followed by radiotherapy to either primary or one of the metastatic sites, and then they go on to nephrectomy and is a resection of all visible disease, followed by, again, a checkpoint inhibition afterwards. Um, I'll keep you updated, but again, I think this is, this is a very exciting trial and hopefully uh, will produce good results. So to summarize, what is the current role of neoadjuvant therapy in kidney cancer? I think in some select cases, uh, this can be used to improve resectability, render something that we don't think we can resect prior, prior to surgery to something that can become resectable, maybe decrease excessive morbidity, prevent unnecessary complications. Maybe in some select patients who would be rendered anephric by surgery, maybe we can allow them to have a nephron-sparing surgery and keep them off dialysis. I think this is actually a minority of excitement here. I think the major, the most exciting thing here are therapies such as checkpoint inhibitors and modern, radi modern radiation together or, uh, or separately. And I think these therapies prior to surgery can actually revolutionize the new adjuvant paradigm and actually move this field forward. If you don't remember anything about my talk, remember as of now, uh, neoadjuvant therapy in kidney cancer is investigational, which means if there is a clinical trial looking at this concept and it's reasonable, I think we have to support it. It's a very interesting paradigm. We'd like to thank all of you here, obviously the, our patients and our families that have contributed to these studies and have, that helped move this field forward. Again, please support the clinical trials, very important, and I list here my email if there are any questions or you guys want to reach out to me directly. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.